Hey everyone, you're watching Soundwaves TV. Chasta here with my new fave band, Straight Jacket. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for having us. Oh my God, thank, thank you, you for so being much. here. Thank it's you. funny, we were talking right before uh, we hit record here and Dennis and I were trying to figure out how you came into our sphere because all of a sudden, it was like all the stars aligned and all of us were getting emails like Straight Jacket and we were sending them to each other like, have you seen this band? Hey, check out this band. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And we all had the same sentiment and I hope it's a positive. It is in my opinion, it's the highest compliment. Everyone. I sent it to went sick. They got like early Green Day vibes. Do you hear that a lot? <laughs> You're the Green first Day. person to tell us that. <laughs> no way. I'm the four thousandth person to tell you that. But it's a compliment. It's such yeah. a compliment. Yeah, no, it's yeah. We uh, we uh, we're fans. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> we so. know of them. Well, What's you're from here. Billy? They're legends. Yeah. <laughs> Billy something. Billy something. <laughs> it's like three names. I can't oh. remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love them for sure. We're, we pull from a lot of influences early on. And Green Day is like definitely a heavy one. And Blink and like the monkeys, Arctic monkeys. And, oh, yeah. 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 I could hear that. Yeah. No, it's sure. we have a lot of great influences, but them for sure. They're like in our hearts. Have you met them? No. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a goal of ours for sure. We um. Uh, You're well on your way. I. You You're know, well on your way. We're shooting for the stars. <laughs> <you know>? I, <laughs> I we, hate um, to just jump out there and and go for this one already. I was gonna warm up to it, but I got to tell you, I mean, you guys, your rocket has taken off. Like playing uh, with the offspring, you're on these huge festivals, Aftershock, which I'm so excited to be able to like hang with you guys backstage and interview at Aftershock. It'll be so fun. <laughs> and welcome to Rockville. Uh, so I usually ask bands that come on the set, like, if you could play with anybody, who would you play with? But you're about to play with some of the biggest bands in the world and maybe on your roster. But the bands that you are playing with, notwithstanding, who else? Let's just throw out the universe, make it happen. I mean, Green Day, I guess, would make that list. I mean, we we taught we would joke about these bands that we were that we're opening for, you know, like four even just four three three four years ago we joke about opening for the Offspring. What are you smiling? <laughs> I love it. We, so we we love all those bands. We grew up with all those bands, and um, it, it's the most exciting thing in the world, really. Yeah. Like, just genuinely, you know. It's uh, not a joke. The universe listens. I I think so. Yeah, like, <laughs> it listens, and apparently some, it's manifested for you guys. Some forty one was nuts. The chats, we love the chats, dude. Like yeah. Smoko, six liter, six liter GTR, and yeah. I think a band though for me is like if we could open for them. Like, I've always loved the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, so much. They're like such a heavy influence. Like, they're awesome. They know? are awesome. What do you think, Nate? I mean, obviously for me it's Blink. Yeah. Why do you or say that, man? Why, why I obviously? Love Blink, man. I love Blink. I, I didn't know this, man. Sleeve, dude. <laughs> what? And of course, Foo Fighters. Yeah, and, dude. Yes. And Story So Far, you know what I mean? Oh, hey, this so stuff far. happens. I mean, you go back a couple of years ago, we had Destroy Boys on this set. And it was funny because a couple of years even before that, we they were on our radar. And we were like, oh my God, we got to get Destroy Boys. And then they came on the set. And by the way, coolest coolest kids ever. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, they're so great. And Where then boom, finished? they're on tour with Blink and they're all over the place. And it was like... Wow, like just it's very exciting to see a band like you guys and watch your rocket take off and then be able to watch you go into the stratosphere. Yeah. That's a cool feeling from our perspective because that's what we're about here. Yeah. It's like helping that movement. And you mentioned Destroy Boys. Destroy Boys are so we they they're a Gilman band as well. Yeah. And yeah, we of course. regular that venue for a long time, you know, obviously like the COVID pandemic slowed that down a bit, sure. but they were a big Gilman band, and that, that one of the reasons we wanted to play there a lot too. You yeah, know, I booked a show at Gilman before the band was even formed. Like that was really it's an important venue to me, you know, because obviously Green Day's out of there as well, and it's so, iconic. Yeah, I mean, it's, being from it's the like Bay the area. CBGBs of the Bay. Sure, you know? exactly. So, that is super exciting, and just to see other bands from there blow up, like Destroy Boys, is so much fun it's you feel like you're a part of something you know yeah and Just, you really are i mean we've been doing this show for a long time now and you know the the scene i think co goes in waves i think you might agree yeah 100%. you know but we're in a we're in a flow <laughs> like yeah. we're definitely there's stuff bubbling right now like before the pandemic time. you know there was like a lot of these great bands that we knew and then after like where did they go yeah you know yeah. it was talk like a lot of these great bands that we loved like eventually disbanded because they had life you know going on and stuff and yeah 
we we kept pushing we kept trying you know yeah i love a shout out to giselle by the way our wonderful beautiful amazing magical intern here at soundwave she interviewed you guys a couple weeks ago and love giselle yeah she's great she's <laughs> the greatest um but she she mentioned you guys mentioned in that interview about covid like how you got sort of in this like process of playing every day because we had time and space to do that right yeah. and then you sort of got used to doing it and then just continued it yeah how do you balance life lifing <laughs> right and yeah. trying to like live in the bay and afford it and all that stuff and do this at the same time because it's not easy it's not easy yeah. for anybody it's tough yeah you know the pandemic was uh uh helped us out a lot i mean didn't help many people yeah but for us like w with nothing to do what we had was the band like we yeah that was the thing that kept us sane through that yeah like Nate joined right when the pandemic started and we spent every day practicing in a little pool warehouse in Redwood City, mm -hmm. um, just getting as good as we can before we hit the ground running, yeah. you know? It's like I told Giselle, you know, it's like the second Nate jammed out with us. I'll never forget the first time mm -hmm. he, we just played some random song. I forget what chord progression or what it we were doing. a Green Day song. I love it. Oh, yes. Come full circle. You weren't supposed to say that, man. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Which one? Now I'm curious. Do you remember which one it was? It was she, I think. Was oh, it, good was one. It she? Yeah. Oh, that's a great choice. But it was like, that was the second I heard the music. You yeah. know, it was like the second we all played, you know, bass, drums, guitar, vocals. Like, that was that was it. That, that was, was like, the this spark. Is... Nate, you're the spark. Nate was really. I love you, man. <laughs> No, no spark. Come no, on, man. No, man. <laughs> that, that's actually the lightning in the bottle. I was talking about that uh, yesterday on the air. You know, when you just hear some bands and you know, like, that that was written in the stars. That was meant to be somewhere else. And you just, you, I'm sure feel that. I've never been in a band, but I'm sure you feel that click, right? It's like when it all happens. Yes, 100%. And as the consumer, as the listener, you hear that too. And I hear that with you guys. Like, Be My Drug, as soon as that 10 seconds into that song, was like, Holy shit. Really? Like, oh my God, yeah. I mean, I think that may have been the first one I hit randomly whenever yeah. the email first came through. And I was so impressed. And Thank I mean, you. then I just loved everything else. But it's pretty incredible to hear that spark so quickly. It doesn't always happen that way. Yeah. You know, the amazing thing about having Nate join the band was like, you, you, it really was a night and day situation. You know, even in the studio when we were recording in, in Vancouver when Nate got behind the kit to play what he played on some of the songs, like everyone in the studio was like, like had their eyes peeled on yeah. what he yeah, was dude. doing. Yeah. Like, I remember the sound tech was t like saying like, uh, our producer went to the sound tech, the sound tech, uh, our producer asked, yeah, Flav, Brian asked Flav, like, can you play as dr like Brian as good as him? And then Shout out. the yeah. drum tech was like, I can't play it as good right now, man. Like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude. Did you know this is going to be a love fest on you? <laughs> we love, love you, it. man. I, I did not know. Well, it's it's important because, I mean, I'm married to a drummer, so I'm a little bit partial here, but the drums are so important. They lay the foundation, right? 100%. And, you know, and it, it really is important to have that click right in like it did. You guys have worked with some great people. I mean, talk about some of the producers, some of the people that you've been kind of stewing with. I can go on and on about Brian Howes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah no, awesome. seriously. I think. I love you, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I believed from the get go that the most important thing to making an album is making sure that you're having fun doing it. You Amen. know what I mean? Yeah. You hear, you hear that in the music, you know, and we were just, you know, a couple of years ago, we were just a couple of guys who were traveling really far you know we're like best friends we spend all the time in the world together and we got to go on this amazing journey together and make an album and it and brian brought that out you know he yeah. he made sure that it was the most important the most important thing was to be having fun when you were doing it yeah. and he made sure that we were having the best possible time don't forget about carl too That's Dude, i can't carl, forget about carl i can't on. forget about carl <laughs> our sound engineer carl to care he He's a legend. Those yeah. people really do put their thumbprint on songs and albums, you know, and it yeah. really is so crucial. I don't think that people realize how much producers and sound engineers really, you know, invest and then mark a song or an album or even a band if they work with you time and time again. I agree. You know, when we were in the studio, we had like these, our idea, you know, like just bass, drums, guitar and vocals. But it was like Brian and Carl both of their expertise like like oh let's add this here let's add that there you know it was like you had an idea 
like like pretend a song is a portrait like a painting and you're like you painted it and they're like oh let's add like a tree here let's add a cloud let's add sunshine let's oh i love it all these little things yeah. and that's exactly how i they bob rossed it they bob rossed it. It. it dude 100 <laughs> percent. that's great 100 percent. it's that. even fun it's even fun to hear like the things that aren't gonna work you know like mm-hmm. yeah there was one point where where like Brian was like, get into the, uh, get into the booth and like hit the, uh, <laughs> what is that? The, the, the thing that goes, yeah, I don't remember what it was called. I don't care called, if it's like a name. rattlesnake. It was like, yeah, oh, like the rattles. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah. get in there and try that. And we tried that and it didn't work. Everybody's like, no. It happened and we all just laughed, you know, <laughs> I was like, that's not going to stay in there, but it is fun to do. It's fun to screw up. I know? love yeah. at the end of it. I can't remember what song it is, but one of you is like, that one's better or that was it or what? Bad star. Yeah. 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 That, that that's a great it's just a moment it's like a cool moment that kind of lets you into what's going on it's pretty cool in real time because that that actual that vocal right there that like oh that was better yeah that was better that was that's genuine that, yeah. that, that was, was better that was not only was that genuine but it was like one of the first takes too because we went to armory studios and then we went back to his studio to record those tracks yeah and he said that like in one of the very beginning like of the no. whole month long process. I'm sorry <laughs> no <laughs> it was the fir- it was when we were laying the bed tracks yeah the exactly the city not yeah. when I was singing anything yeah it already studio since the beginning we, of it it was like the second or third track and the yeah. first one we thought was like that wasn't very good right yeah and we finished the next one and the way you talk to the producer in right, the room yeah. is by speaking into the mic right and I was like yeah that was better uh, I yeah, love you know, that you brought that to you yeah <laughs> that's and really cool and he did cool. he kept it that was it's, so much it's fun it's genuine it has no. A, uh, has no. A, no, that's not it. I love it. So let's talk about the name first of all, because when it came through, I was like, "Straight Jacket." That's not. Is that how you spell Straight Jacket? That's not how you spell Straight Jacket. I love it though. But but tell me about Straight Jacket and why and how and all that. That was Nate. Oh, now that was Nate. Man, back to you, Nate. You're <laughs> oh. the superstar. Well, I mean, we wanted to get a new name, right? Because before our name was New Manhattan. Mm-hmm. From the after a drink. After a drink from Phil's Coffee that neither of Shout you even Phil's. tried, but you like it. The name. It, to be fair, it is a cool name. I'll give you that. I've never sick. had a new Manhattan, but it's a cool name. Rolls off the tongue. I like the it Mocha does. Tesora, man. Mocha tesora. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then we were just, I was just thinking of names, I guess, and that one just sounded cool. There was a couple more I had that just sounded stupid. <laughs> 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 they were just random words, but then I landed on Straight Jacket, and then I asked them what they thought of it. Yeah. And I get, they were like, yeah, it's fine. That works. <laughs> I like it, man. I think yeah. the, the cool part about it is like, we wanted like the one syllable and the two syllable thing, like the straight jacket, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Led Zeppelin. Or Exa- I was just exactly. going to say that. You took the Death words out Leopard of my mouth. Or People, thin there's Lizzie. like a whole conspiracy theory that that really does matter. Like, you know, yeah. and we'll it, go with that. It's Run just with a it. hit, hit, hit. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, yeah, they, they talk about that theory. And then, of course, the theory of the heart, the human heartbeat, like the resting heart rate, uh, where it, uh, it was a whole study done by UCLA about this, about number one hits. It broke down, and I'm, totally botching it go look it up it's a really cool study mm-hmm. but about the natural human heart rate um if a song is written in that bpm that that'll be hit yeah because that's what we're our body is accustomed really? to hearing it's really trippy but I, it makes perfect sense too you've been doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> we gotta slow it down <laughs> no you no. guys, you guys yeah it. science Kill that heart rate don't worry about it who cares um, so yeah, the rest of the year, you guys have some amazing things happening. You got on Danny Wimmer's radar, Danny Wimmer behind the scenes. He's the guy who does Aftershock and Welcome to Rockville and a ton of other festivals that you've heard of. How do you feel like you got on his radar? How did that play out? What was that phone call like? Cause that's a big deal. You know, um, the main thing with Danny, with Danny Wimmer and, and those festivals is that we signed to our record label edge out records mm-hmm. who, the owner of the labor, labor, label. <laughs> it is a labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> it's a labor of love. The owner of the label um, worked with Danny Wimmer before. Okay. So this, and he really liked us and we really liked him, you mm-hmm, know? Like mm-hmm. we just, he was like a friend. And how did anything. you, I was gonna say, how did you know him or how did you introduce yourselves to him? We met him at the Viper Room. Uh, we had a show in Love LA, the Viper. the Viper Room, right? That's where and then, I met um, my husband. We, oh, Full yeah, circle. Yep, yeah, yeah, full circle. And we had, um, I think our our CEO, Tony, great guy, he hosted like this whole like dinner before the Viper Room show. Oh, okay. And there was like a lot of people there and we met Danny for the first time there. Wow. Real cool guy, man. Wow. He's really chill. 
And yeah, I think that's how we met him that's for the massive. very first time. I'm like letting that soak in. That's yeah. a big deal. At the Rainbow Cafe, right? At the Rainbow? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where it would happen. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've had many a meetings and met lots of lots of that people. That place is there. crazy, man. It the last time we were nice. there, it was, we there was this a fight. Full, we had this full table of just Forgot legendary people, you know. Yeah. Bill McGathy, our wonderful manager, was there. Yeah. Um, our label owners were there. Uh, Danny Wimmer was there as well. You were there, man. I was there, man. <laughs> Come on, Nate man. Nate was there. Nate was there. I was there. I, could, I you were there. Drink. Ah, what? <laughs> and Raul was drink. there. Man, that's so relatable. That's so real. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> I feel that. I used to live right down the street from all those places, and I would like walk over and be like, yeah, I can't afford to go in tonight, but I bet that band's cool. <laughs> I totally feel that. That's rad. I mean, it, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen for you guys. Your EP is coming out in like roughly two weeks. I don't math, uh, but May 10th. So tell everybody, like, what's the plan behind that? How many songs do we uh, get out of that? How many videos, more importantly, for Soundwaves TV? <laughs> Go for it, man. Oh, I know you know. I want you to have that, man. I don't think I got it. We got five <laughs> songs coming out. Five songs total. Fair enough. We got five songs coming out in the EP. We're really stoked. Uh, just about 10 or 20, 30 minutes ago, it was an Instagram post where we released the soundtrack. It was uh, oh, awesome! It was we got our song "Bad Start" and "Be My Drug," which is already out. Yeah, a new song, "Cut the Cord," uh -huh. "Living a Lie," and "Torch" okay. that are coming out as well. Great! We're really, really excited to show those songs because they're. I think they are a different side of us, but they okay. show the general mission of the band, you know, and what yeah. we want to do, um, yeah. and how how far we want to flex our muscles you know what i mean like yeah so we're really stoked for that you know That's um awesome. five songs three new ones two you've already heard if you haven't heard them go check them out two that i'm already <laughs> in love with so i have yeah. a good feeling about the other three do we have plans for videos at this point or like you're just ruminating on that we do have plans for videos have you actually. started yeah. have you started videos i saw in giselle's interview that you were like kind of percolating we have a slideshow concept of one. Okay, okay. And we're really stoked for it. I I don't know a lot of details because we have someone who's working on it right now. Okay. Um, but it's going to be really fun. I promise you that. I don't doubt it. I Make sure you look them up on Instagram. I mean, that's where I found you guys specifically. But the, I don't even know what you call it, the like blobby guy that's walking for yeah. be my drug and then like melts into the floor i was like what am i watching did i just take shrooms like it is so cool so i don't know if you're using any of that technology for anything but yeah it's really cool yo we really did have a good visualizer artist yeah. Yeah. that was yeah. really was real. he, he, he crushed all of them my yeah, goat, man. Man. My goat. that's so yeah. rad all right so go find straight jacket spell it out for them to make sure they get it right st sorry no go for <laughs> I just it. cut you it's off it's a rock and roll spelling bee go for it yeah s-t-r-a-t-e jacket spelled normally yes <laughs> two go, words <laughs> go check us out uh yeah <laughs> give us a chance please. give us a chance give us a chance <laughs> oh i'm so excited My day to in the sun. You guys. your rocket is is like i said it's it's headed to the stratosphere so you Thank guys you. better not turn me down for an interview backstage at aftershock never. i'm so never. pissed no, never we so but you're my my bay area boys we gotta stick together <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right straight jacket find them and we'll We'll be right back. You're watching Sideways TV. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>